Hi, Aqua Rumors. Time for chapter reading. So, Pa has gone to town, and Laura and Mary and Ma have heard singing and chanting an Indian jamboree in the distance. And they've been waiting for Pa to come home. It's a long trip to Independence and then back home. Four days. Pa finally came home. Ma went out to help Pa bring in the bundles. He came in with his arms full, and Laura and Mary clung to his sleeves and jumped on his feet. Pa laughed his big, jolly laugh. Hey, hey, don't upset me, he, he laughed. What do you think I am, a tree to climb? He dropped the bundles on the table. He hugged Laura in a big bear hug and tossed her and hugged her again. Then he hugged Mary snugly in his other arm. Listen, Pa, Laura said. Listen to the Indians. Why are they making that funny noise? Oh, they're having some kind of jamboree, Pa said. I heard them when I crossed the creek bottoms. Then he went out to unhitch the horses and bring in the rest of the bundles. He had got the plow. He left it in the stable, but he brought all the seeds into the house for safety. He had sugar, not any white sugar this time, but brown. White sugar costs too much, but he had brought a little white flour. There were cornmeal and salt and coffee and all the seeds they needed. Pa had even got seed potatoes. Laura wished they might eat the potatoes, but they must be saved to plant. Then Pa's face beamed and he opened a small paper sack. It was full of crackers. He set it on the table and he unwrapped and set beside it a glass jar full of little green cucumber pickles. I thought we'd all have a treat, he said. Laura's mouth watered and Ma's eyes shone softly at Pa. He had remembered how she longed for pickles. Oh, that wasn't all. He gave Ma a package and watched her unwrap it. And in it was enough pretty calico to make her a dress. Oh, Charles, you shouldn't. It's too much, she said. But her face and paws were two beams of joy. Now, he hung up his cap and his plaid coat on their pegs. His eyes looked sideways at Laura and Mary, but that was all. He sat down and stretched out his legs on the fire. Mary sat down too and folded her hands in her lap, but Laura climbed onto Pa's knee and beat him with her fists. Where is it? Where is it? Where's my present? She said, beating him. Paul laughed his big laugh, like great bells ringing, and he said, why, I do believe there is something in my pocket. He took out an oddly shaped package, and very, very slowly he opened it. You first, Mary, he said, because you are so patient. And he gave Mary a comb for her hair. And here, flutter budget, <laughs> this is for you, he said to Laura. The combs were exactly alike. They were made of black rubber, rubber, and curved to fit over the top of a little girl's 
head and over the top of the comb lay a flat piece of black rubber with curving slits cut in it and in the very middle of it a five-pointed star was cut out. A bright colored ribbon was drawn underneath and the color showed through. Ooh, before I read more, I want to show you the picture. So they're calling this a comb. It's really a little more like a headband. And there is Lara's and there is Mary. But part of it is made with rubber. And see the star on top? Yeah. So Pa picked that out all by himself. And I meant to show you this wonderful picture when he came home. My goodness, look at that. They're so excited to see him. Yes. Four days is a long time to be gone, I think. Now the ribbon in Mary's comb was blue and the ribbon in Laura's comb was red. Ma smoothed back their hair and slid the combs into it. And there, in the golden hair, exactly over the middle of Mary's forehead, was a little blue star. And in Laura's brown hair, over the middle of her forehead, was a little red star. Laura looked at Mary's star, and Mary looked at Laura's, and they laughed with joy. They had never had anything so pretty. Ma said, but Charles, you didn't get yourself anything. Oh, I got myself a plow, said Pa. And do you know what a plow is? A plow is how a farmer digs up the dirt and the soil to plant the seeds. A horse pulls the plow. Mm -hmm. Warm weather will be here soon and I'll be plowing. That was the happiest supper they've had for a long time. Pa was safely home again. The fried salt pork was very good after so many months of eating ducks and geese and turkeys and venison, and nothing had ever tasted so good as those crackers and the little green sour pickles. Pa told them all about the seeds. He had got seeds of turnips and carrots and onions and cabbage. He had got peas and beans and corn and wheat and tobacco and the seed potatoes and watermelon seed, he said to Ma. I tell you, Caroline, when we begin getting crops off this rich land of ours, we'll be living like kings. They had almost forgotten the noise from the Indian camp. The window shutters were closed now and the wind was moaning and the chimney was whining around the house. They were so used to the wind, they did not hear it. But when the wind was silent, for an instant, Laura heard again that wild, fast-beating sound from the Indian camps. Then Pa said something to Ma that made Laura sit very still and listen carefully. He said that folks in Independence said that the government was going to put the white settlers out of the Indian Territory. He said the Indians had been complaining and they had got that answer from Washington. Oh, Charles, no, Ma said, not when we have done so much. Pa said he didn't believe it. He said they always have let settlers keep their land didn't I get word straight from Washington that this country's going to be opened up for settlement any time? I wish they'd settle it and just stop talking about it, Ma said. 
After Laura was in bed, she lay awake a long time, and so did Mary. Pa and Ma sat in the firelight and candlelight reading. Pa had brought a newspaper from Kansas, and he read it to Ma. It proved that he was right. The government would not do anything to the white settlers. Whenever the sound of the wind died away, Laura could faintly hear the noise of the Indian jamboree in their camp. Sometimes, even above the howling of the wind, she thought she still heard yells of jubilation. Faster, faster, faster. They made her heart beat. Hi, 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 ya. Hi, hi, ha. Ooh, my goodness. The next chapter. Wow, this will be an adventure. Prairie Fire. Hmm. Spring had come. The warm winds smelled exciting. And all outdoors was large and bright and sweet. Big white shining clouds floated high in the clear space. Their shadows floated over the prairie. The shadows were thin and brown, and all the rest of the prairie was the pale, soft colors of the dead grass. Pa was breaking the prairie sod with Pet and Patty hitched to the plow. The sod was a tough, thick mass of grass roots Pet and Patty slowly pulled with all their might, and the sharp plow slowly turned over a long, unbroken strip of that sod. The dead grass was so tall and thick that it held up the sod. Where Paul had plowed, he didn't have a plowed field. The long strips of grass roots lay on top of the grass, and grass stuck out between them. But Pa and Pet and Patty kept on working. He said that sod potatoes and sod corn would grow this year. And the next year, the roots and the dead grasses would be rotted. In two or three years, he would have nicely plowed fields. Pa liked the land because it was so rich and there wasn't a tree or a stump or a rock in it. Now, a great many Indians came riding along the Indian Trail. Indians were everywhere. Their guns echoed in the creek bottoms where they were hunting. No one knew how many Indians were in the prairie, which seemed so level, but it wasn't. Often, Laura saw an Indian where no one had been an instant before. Indians often came to the house. Some were friendly, some were cross. All of them wanted food and tobacco, and Ma gave them what they wanted. When an Indian pointed at something, Ma gave him that thing. But most of the food was kept hidden and locked up. Jack was cross all the time, even with Laura. He was never let off of his chain, and all the time he lay, and he hated the Indians. Laura and Mary were quite used to seeing them now. Indians didn't surprise them at all, but they always felt better near Pa or Jack. One day, they were helping Ma get dinner. Baby Carrie was playing on the floor in the sunshine, and suddenly, the sunshine was gone. I do believe it's going to storm, Ma said. Looking out of the window, Laura looked too. A great black cloud was billowing up in the south across the sun. Pet and Patty were coming running from the field. Pa holding to the heavy plow and bounding in long leaps behind it. Prairie fire, he shouted. 
Get the tub full of water. Put sacks in it. Hurry. <gasps> My goodness. We'll read about this tomorrow. Wow. Thank you, boys and girls. Stay tuned.